Howdy! It's Jim Morado, and this is late November 2021. We're in Corinth, Mississippi, at their uh, Civil War Battlefield Visitor Center. And check out that nice piece. Kind of a nice sculpture of some soldiers marching. And yeah, right, right there as you go towards the main entrance. Wanted to mention, uh, I was reading in Blue and Gray magazine, that they actually used rangers and staff from the visitor center as models for that piece, which I think is pretty cool. Right now we're looking at, that looks almost like a fire pit with a burned shirt. It looks like a scorched shirt kind of thing. You saw a rifle a moment ago. And yeah, some more debris from a battle. And actually, this is kind of an art piece itself. We're going, we're, I think we're going the wrong way. I think you're supposed to kind of walk up the hill towards the visitor center and check out the scattered debris le leading to the visitor center. This this is basically representing, you know, the, the, the scattered bits and pieces left at the end of a battle. And I really think this is something special. Very unique. I don't think I've seen anything like this before. But as you're walking on the sidewalk, there are casts of pieces of clothing and shirts, weapons, uh, canteens that you see as you're walking. Buttons. You know, all sorts of little things as you're walking the sidewalk going towards or away from the visitor center. Yeah, this is just really, really nice. Somebody told me about this, and I, I thought, wow, I gotta, I really had to check this out. Look at that. Anyways, it's very, very well done, and I really admired it. And yeah, we'll we'll walk for a little bit. We'll look at all the items that have been kind of embedded into the sidewalk. Yeah, we, we got here actually a little bit before the Visitor Center opened. We had our dog with us, and we just kind of took him for a little walk. He he actually tried to um, take a little bite out of the first gun you saw there originally, but he, he learned that it was not edible. But yeah, I just I think this is a, a great piece of art. Um, I, something really, really special at a Civil War Visitor Center. It's actually called the Corinth Civil War Interpretive Center. And we'll, we'll go in here in just a moment. But, um, yeah, I, I, you know, we, we drove down basically to do Shiloh. We wanted to do as much of Shiloh as we could. We ended up fitting uh, Corinth in kind of as a, um, well, we've got a couple of hours. Let's go over and make sure we squeeze in some of Corinth. And... You know, we, we hit the, the interpretive center. We did a little bit of driving around town. I'll put up some of that later. C Corinth, to me, is, is a very... Well, if you read up on Shiloh, to me, it's kind of easy to understand. I understand that battle. I get everything that happened. You can go and you can drive around, you know, the Shiloh battlefield. You know about the players involved. It, it's a very... It's complicated, but it's an easy-to-understand battle in my books. With Corinth, it's a little more scattered. It's a little more... Eh, there's more going on, and it's it's hard to kind of pin down exactly, well, here's what happened. But uh, Corinth was a, a very important area during the Civil War. Very, very centrally located. Uh, it was kind of a booming frontier town. Two major railroads were located there as the Civil War started. Just a very, very important place to the Confederacy early on. You know, especially with getting troops out and using that railroad. You know, and of course part of Shiloh is the, the Union was marching down to attack Corinth. And the Confederates decided to, yeah, let's let's go north a little bit and meet them before they get here. And that's pretty much how Shiloh started. Well, after the Battle of Shiloh, you know, the Confederates come back down to this area. You know, they're, they're nursing their wounds. They're planning for what's next. And they, uh, 
you know, of course, the, the Union's marching down. And, you know, you, you have... Um, Gosh, I guess I guess more of a series of skirmishes happen. You, you know, you have some fighting. You know, the stuff you'd expect during during a, a civil war confrontation. But you have uh, you have Halleck with the Union. You know, kind of over the Union forces, and he is being very conservative, and he's fighting a very very eh, kind of stiff battle. You know, he's he's inching towards. Uh, Corinth, and he's he's trying not to, um, you know, expend any more forces than, than than needed. He doesn't want to waste or lose soldiers. You know, he knows they've got them. He wants to kind of attack conservatively. I, I guess is the best way to put it. And meanwhile, the Confederates are still suffering from all their wounds at Shiloh. Uh, they're also dealing with lots of disease and bad water in town. That's uh, affecting that's affecting them greatly. Basically, you know, the Confederates, uh, you know, Beauregard with the Confederacy decides to start pulling in trains and acting like they're getting reinforcements. Meanwhile, sending those trains back out with their, uh, um, you know, wounded and other soldiers. He's he's evacuating okay. Corinth. He's basically saying, let's, let's get out of here as stealthily as we can. Halleck falls for it. Yeah, the, uh, the Confederates basically leave town the union takes over they build their works there's still some some fights that occur and that sort of thing but for the most part the union takes over the area uh, with with along with that the access to the railroads which is a huge advantage yeah so they didn't you know the union basically holds Corinth until towards the end of the war they uh, they do you know later I, I want to say in 64 right right before the war ends they they leave the area. They don't really need it as much anymore. The Confederate comes. The Confederacy comes back in, but it's uh, kind of a too little, too late situation. And the war's pretty much over. It's not uh, not as big of an advantage to them. And there's you know, lots of other stuff goes on too. But I just wanted to try to mention the the, the battle in a nutshell as we go through the interpretive center here one thing this this is slick this is new this is modern i like what they're doing you know i kind of like uh, how they've got things laid out it, it's a nice interpretive center I, I didn't see you know i love relics i want to see as much you know actual stuff from the battlefield as i can and they were they were kind of um they didn't have a ton of that but they did have a lot of informative stuff. They they show a film that looked kind of not interactive, but kind of 3D-ish. And I, I did not stick around to see that film, and I kind of regret that. It looked it looked interesting. But I you know I did do a couple of run-throughs just to see what they had going. I took a lot of pictures so I could read signs later, uh, especially when we have our dog with us. You know we can't spend a long time in visitor centers like this. You know, I'll I'll go in and look around while, while my wife hangs out with my dog, and then we'll switch off. So, anyway, but yeah, I wanted to mention the Interpretive Center here and give you a quick look at it, a quick run-through. Also, wanted to bring up that inside of the gift shop here at this, this particular visitor center, they do have some back issues of Blue and Gray magazine. And uh, if you've watched any of my other videos, I sing the praises of Blue and Gray magazine all the time. And, and they've actually reprinted their Corinth issue as a visitor's guide. It's the same same magazine you would have got on the newsstand back when it came out. Yeah, I think minus some ads. But for the most part, it's, it's what you would have picked up back then, but they've reprinted it. And Blue and Gray magazine just does such a great job. Uh, each issue covers a particular battle. They give you a big section about what happened there, and then they tell you what's, uh, you know, what you can see if you go visit that town now or if you go visit that area. Here's that. Uh, here's where they show that movie, and this looks really cool. I kind of looked at the screen; it's almost got like a 3D effect going on. And I bet this, uh, yeah, I, I want to go back and just watch this movie if nothing else. Uh, Shiloh is definitely one of the areas. I, I want to get back to as soon as I can. I, I liked it, and I don't feel like I covered it thoroughly enough. 
we, we spent a couple of hours driving around town. They gave us a walking tour map and a driving tour map. And we kind of used both of those to go and just hit some of the highlight headquarters and stuff that I wanted to see. And that was a lot of fun. I know some people in Shiloh told us, or at, near, at Shiloh, basically said the actual battlefields uh, just, I mean, it just doesn't exist. It's all been kind of swallowed up by development. So, we, I mean, we really didn't do any driving tour stuff to see where the battles, you know, the major battle stuff happened. But we did want to come up and see this visitor center. A lot of people raved about it. They were right. It is really cool. And I will say also, in the Blue and Gray magazine, they have a whole section on the visitor center kind of explaining what's going on here, uh, especially with the sidewalk we saw earlier. In fact, they have um, kind of a piece-by-piece -piece guide to what you're looking at as you go through the sidewalk there at the front, which I think is great. And there is also a piece of art out back. And I think I went through it, but I think I just filmed it maybe through one of the windows. Now, I actually, that, that kind of represents the, the local uh, battery there. That's, that's kind of cool. I wish I'd filmed more of it. But there's a, a piece of art kind of behind the visitor center. It's kind of a waterfall thing. And it's kind of a history of, kind of a military history. It's a kind of artsy thing that's that's pretty neat, and if you have a little guide with you to explain it to you, it makes a lot more sense, but just looking at it, it seemed a little out of place for a Civil War interpretive center, in my opinion. I still thought it was neat. It was very unique. And, yeah, I loved this visit visitor center a lot. I honestly probably... Well, no, I, I not probably... I like this visitor center more than the one at Shiloh. It's not as um, busy. It's not as busy. There was one ranger there. I forget her name, but I ended up talking to her for probably half an hour. She was very sweet, very helpful. You could tell she cared about the national parks. She cared about the battlefields. You know, and I, I enjoyed talking to her very much because she was knowledgeable. Which, they were at Shiloh, too. I just think they were too busy to really get into, um... And they were too busy to be very chatty over at Shiloh. Again, I just think because it's such a busy uh, visitor center with lots of people coming through. But this this one was not busy, and I, I enjoyed chatting with the staff there quite a bit. They had a really nice gift shop. Again, Blue and Gray Magazines. You know, postcards, patches, the kind of stuff I love picking up. And lots of information here, too. This is just really well done. And Shiloh, as I say with a lot of places, you know, we, we allowed a couple of hours at Shiloh. And you could, um, if you wanted to do it right, you could spend uh, a couple of days. You know, if you really enjoy, you know, I, I, I could have spent probably a couple of hours at this visitor center really doing it right. And the, the driving slash walking tour... I would have liked to have done more of it. It um, it just it had a lot going on for sure. Yeah, and I, th I thought this was just a nice little area. And of course, you know, it's uh, maybe a 20-minute drive from Shiloh. You're not that far from Parker's Crossroads, which we've also visited on this trip. Uh, Tupelo is very close and we did not make it there in fact that's an area i've not made it to yet and it's been on my list for multiple reasons for quite some time so uh, yeah very very you know civil war rich area you know we squeezed in quite a bit but there was still quite a bit that we did not get to squeeze in and i hope to make it back here very very soon but yeah, I'll, I'll put up a video of us doing the driving tour, or m most of the driving tour. We did find a nice coffee shop in town. Uh, really cool old drugstore restaurant kind of grill place we stopped at. I'll put a video of it up too that really impressed me. And I only got to spend a few minutes there, and I want to go back and try one of their slug burgers. Uh, that place looked neat. Uh, Borum's Drugs, I believe it was called. Very cute, old, you know, kind of Mayberry-ish downtown area. Yeah, there, there's the, the sculpture I mentioned earlier. 
But yeah, this was just a neat area. If you know more about it, let me know. Uh, let me know what you think about the visitor center. Thanks.